use the determinant to find the eigenvalues of matrix A. Give the basis for each of the corresponding eigenspaces. So here we have the beautiful 2 by 2 matrix, 3, 9, 6, 0. So the first thing that we want to do is find the eigenvalues of matrix A. So our goal here is to solve the determinant of matrix A minus lambda times the identity matrix is equal to 0 for lambda. So here we go. The first thing that we need is to find this matrix A minus lambda times the 2 by 2 identity. So we have matrix A is 3, 9, 6, 0. And we are adding the 2 by 2 matrix minus lambda, 0, 0, minus lambda. And combining up those like terms, we have the resulting 2 by 2 matrix, 3 minus lambda, 6, 9 minus lambda. Beautiful. So we are now ready to go ahead and start finding the determinant. So we have the determinant of the matrix A minus lambda times the identity matrix is going to be equal to the determinant of this matrix we just found. So we know that the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix is AD minus BC. So we have negative lambda multiplied by 3 minus lambda minus 6 times 9 which leaves us with, we'll have lambda squared minus 3 lambda minus 54. Now, we know we're going to be setting this determinant equal to 0, so we might as well factor. So we can rewrite this as lambda minus 9 multiplied by lambda plus 6. So we are now ready to start solving for lambda by setting the determinant equal to 0. So here we go, we have lambda minus 9 multiplied by lambda plus 6, and we're setting this equal to 0. And by the zero factor property, we can see we have two solutions. We can see we have lambda is equal to 9, and lambda is equal to negative 6. So these are the eigenvalues of matrix A. So now that we have these eigenvalues, we are ready to find a basis for each eigenvalue. So our goal here is to find the general solution of the matrix equation for each of these eigenvalues. So we'll have two cases that we need to consider. The first case is when lambda is equal to 9. And let's keep in mind here that we're solving matrix A times vector X is equal to 9 times vector X. So the first thing that we need to do is rewrite this matrix equation. So if we subtract 9 times vector X from both sides, we have matrix A times vector X minus 9 times vector X is equal to the 0 vector. And if we factor out that common vector x, we have matrix A minus 9 times the 2 by 2 identity multiplied by vector x is equal to the 0 vector. So we now want to go ahead and find the components of matrix A minus 9 times that 2 by 2 identity matrix. So matrix A is given to us as 3, 9, 6, 0. And we are adding the matrix negative 9, 0, 0, negative 9. So combining up those like terms, we have 3 minus 9 is negative 6. 6 plus 0 is 6. 9 plus 0 is 9. 0 minus 9 is minus 9. Okay, so we can actually see the linear dependence relationship amongst these column vectors already, confirming that yes, this is an eigenvalue of matrix A. But to find the basis for this eigenspace, we need to now go ahead and row reduce this matrix to row reduced echelon form. So we are augmenting matrix A minus 9 times the 2 by 2 identity matrix with the 0 vector. And taking that 2 by 2 matrix we just found, we can see right off the bat that both rows can be reduced. 
we could multiply the first row by a scalar multiple of 1 6 and the second row by a scalar multiple of 1 9th, which leaves us with the 2 by 2 matrix 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1. And continuing our row reduction here, starting with our first pivot, we want to use that to eliminate the entry below it. And we can do this by multiplying the first row by a negative 1 and then adding it to the second row which leaves us with the 2 by 2 matrix 1, negative 1, 0, 0. So we can see here we've attained row reduced echelon form, and we can also see that x sub 2 is a free variable. So we can rewrite this row reduced matrix as the linear system x sub 1 is equal to x sub 2, and we can see that x sub 2 is free. Now, to attain the general solution, let's think about this, uh, this vector x in R2. So we can see that vector x, its first component, x sub 1, is defined as x sub 2. x sub 2 is free, so it's just itself. And again, we can see we have a scalar multiple of x sub 2 here. So we can factor that bad boy out to the front, leaving us with the scalar multiple x sub 2 times the vector 1, 1. Beautiful. So we are ready to state our final conclusion for the eigenspace. So we can say that a basis for the eigenspace E sub 9 is equal to the set of all scalar multiples of the vector 1, 1. And again, remember, equivalently, we can rewrite this in the spanning set form. We have the span of the vector 1, 1. And so this is our beautiful final answer to case one. This is a basis for the eigenvalue lambda equals nine. So now we are ready to do the same thing for our second eigenvalue. We need to consider the case when lambda is equal to negative six. And again, let's keep in mind here that we are solving the equation matrix A times vector x is equal to negative 6 times vector x. So the first thing that we need is to rewrite this equation into something we can use. So we can rewrite this by adding 6 times vector x to both sides. We have matrix A times vector x plus 6 times vector x is equal to the 0 vector. And factoring out that common vector x, we are left with matrix A plus 6 times the 2 by 2 identity matrix times vector x is equal to the 0 vector. So now we need to find the components of this matrix A plus 6 times that 2 by 2 identity. So matrix A is 3, 9, 6, 0. And we are adding this to the matrix 6, 0, 0, 6. So adding up those like components, we have 3 plus 6 is 9, 6 plus 0 is 6, 9 plus 0 is 9, and 0 plus 6 is 6. And again, we can see the linear dependence relationship amongst these column vectors already, confirming that lambda equals negative 6 is definitely an eigenvalue of matrix A. So now that we have this matrix, we're ready to row reduce to row reduced echelon form. So we are augmenting this matrix A plus 6 times the 2 by 2 identity matrix with the 0 vector. So taking that matrix we just found, we can see again that we can immediately simplify this matrix. We could do a scalar multiple of 1 9th times the first row and a scalar multiple of 1 9th times the second row. So this is going to reduce to the 2 by 2 matrix 1, 2 thirds, 1, 2 thirds. And continuing with our row reduction, we take our first pivot and we want to use that to eliminate the entry below it. And we can do this by multiplying the first row by negative 1 and adding it to the second row, which leaves us with the 2 by 2 matrix, 1, 2, 3rd, 0, 0. So we have row reduced echelon form, and we can see that x sub 2 is again a free variable here. 
So we can rewrite this matrix as the linear system. We can see that x sub 1 is equal to negative 2 thirds times x sub 2. And we can see that x sub 2 is free. So taking this information, we can see that the general solution for vector x, again, we know vector x is a vector in R2, and this is specifically where x sub 1 is defined as negative 2 thirds times x sub 2, and x sub 2 is free, so it's just itself. Factoring out that scalar multiple of x sub 2, we see we have x sub 2 multiplied by the vector with components, negative 2 thirds 1. Beautiful. So we are officially ready now to go ahead and make our final conclusions about the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals negative 6. So we can say that, therefore, the basis for the eigenspace for lambda equals or corresponding to lambda equals negative 6 is the set of all scalar multiples of the vector negative 2 thirds 1. Now we can also write this in a spanning set and say that this is the span of the vector negative two thirds one. Beautiful, so this is our beautiful final answer here. But I also want to make a little love note here that this is not an exclusive notation for this answer. Notice that the eigenvector negative two thirds one has a fraction. We don't always like working with fractions. So I want you to note the following equivalent solution. If you want to remove the fraction, simply multiply each component of vector x by the least common denominator, which in this case is 3. So if we multiply the components of vector x in our eigenspace by the least common denominator 3, we can say that a basis for our eigenspace for lambda or corresponding to lambda equals negative 6 is the set of all scalar multiples of the vector negative 2, 3. Again, we can write this in our spanning set form saying that this is the span of the vector negative 2, 3. So either answer is perfect. We tend to like to remove the fractions from our final answer, but they both are equivalent.